Hi, it's time for some AP Chemistry Review. It's me, Dr. V, and I'm here to help you get ready for the AP Chemistry exam in May. Today, we're going through free response question number four from the 2019 exam. This was a short free response question, and it was scored out of four points. What I want you to do before you listen to my webcast is to try to work through the entire problem on your own, either all four parts or each part individually, and then listen to my solution. That's really what's going to help you the most. In order to do that, you need your calculator and your periodic table and your formula sheet. And then you can keep track of your score as you go, which is really, really helpful. Did you put down enough information to demonstrate understanding of that concept and skill? That's really what you're aiming for. So let's jump right in. A student is doing experiments with carbon dioxide gas. If a sample of a gas in a rigid container at 299 Kelvin and 0.70 atmospheres, the student increases the temperature of the gas to 425 Kelvin. Part A asks, describe the effect of raising the temperature on the motion of the carbon dioxide molecules. Now your answer here really needs to relate to kinetic theory. All right, the temperature is going up from 299 Kelvin to 425 Kelvin, and that means the average speed of the particles is going to increase. And that's really what you needed to say here. So your question really needed to relate to the motion of the molecules. Okay. Uh, if you want to expand on this a little further, right, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy, and we know that kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. So if your kinetic energy is going up, it means your average velocity is going up. Uh, but for the point, this was a one-point question, this first bullet point, as temperature increases, the average speed of the particle increases, is really what you needed to write down. Let's go on. Calculate the pressure of the carbon dioxide gas in the container at 425 Kelvin. Now remember, we had started at 299 Kelvin, all right? Um, so it's already in the Kelvin scale, so we don't have to do a Celsius to Kelvin conversion. And it was originally at a pressure of 0 0.70 atmospheres. And then the final temperature got raised to 425 Kelvin. So what we're really looking at here is Charles' law, pressure-temperature relationships. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And this really is the math that we need to do where we're solving for P2. All right, the volume is constant. We're told it's a rigid container, so we can assume that the, the volume will not be changing as we go. All right, and so what we're expecting to see that as the temperature increases, the pressure should also increase. All right, and so we can substitute and evaluate. I always like to rearrange my equation first to solve for that, okay, to solve for P2 and I can substitute in P1 and T1 and T2, all right? And when we go through this, what we see is the final pressure is 0.99 atmospheres, which makes sense. We were expecting the pressure to increase with the increase in temperature, and we're reporting our answer with two sig figs. This question was worth one point. You needed to show enough work and get a correct answer to earn the point. All right, in terms of kinetic molecular theory, explain why the pressure of the carbon dioxide gas changes as it's heated to 425 Kelvin. Well, we know already from part A that as temperature increases, the particles will have a greater average speed, All right? And we have been talking about in our calculation for part B that, right, as the temperature increases, the pressure increases. Why is that? Well, there's two reasons. One is that the particles are going to collide with the container wall more frequently. We're going to have more collisions with the container and that will increase the pressure. The particles will also hit the container wall with more force, all right? So it's really both of these two factors that explain why the pressure increases. You needed one of these two statements. You could, of course, have both, but you needed one of these two statements to get the one point for this question. And there's one more part. The student measures the actual pressure of the carbon dioxide gas at the higher temperature and observes that it's less than the pressure predicted by the ideal gas law. Why could this happen? All right, so we're really looking at deviations from ideal behavior here, all right? And so when you have deviations from ideal behavior, there are two factors that really contribute. One is that the particles themselves take up volume and occupy some of the volume of the container, and also that there are actually attractions between the molecules. And so the lower pressure that we're observing here is really caused by those attractive forces, the London forces, between the carbon dioxide gas particles because they're slightly attracted to each other, they're going to collide with the container wall less frequently. All right, so this first bullet point is um, the lower pressure caused by the attractive forces, right? That's really the gist of what you need to have in your answer to earn the one point. Right? 
fewer collisions with the container wall because you have attractions between the particles, right? The other deviation is that, you know, the particles themselves do occupy some of the volume of the container that lowers the effective volume of the container by a tiny amount, but that would lead to an increase in pressure. So here we're really looking at the attractive forces. So how did you do? This question was scored out of four points and the average score was 2.39 points out of the four. So most students answered two or three of the parts correctly. All right. So if you earned two points out of the four, you're doing fine. If you got three points, you're, you're doing quite well. All four points were really very manageable. So make sure you think about what you need to add to your answers to earn the point. Make sure your answer is clear and coherent and gets to the gist of what the question is asking about. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We'll do more AP Chemistry another day.